A self-described extrovert, Alexis has spent her life active and in good health, and in 2018 was on top of the world having just married the love of her life, Rob. Wanting to start a family right away, they were overjoyed when Alexis became pregnant just a few months after their wedding. However, about five months into her pregnancy, on a routine visit with the doctor, they discovered protein in her urine. And further investigative tests led to a diagnosis that Alexis had IgA nephropathy. The news came as a complete shock. Alexis said she had no real symptoms and no family history of the disease, but she delivered her baby safely to term and had a healthy baby boy named Tate. Knowing that one day she would need a kidney transplant, Alexis and Rob desperately wanted to have a second child. And with careful consideration and working with Alexis doctors, they were once again over the moon when Alexis became pregnant with baby number two. However, what they did not expect as they embarked down this road was COVID-19. Being pregnant has its challenges, being a kidney patient has its challenges. Now put both of these together and a global pandemic into the mix. And this adds a whole nother level of stress to an already hard situation. But nothing prepared them for the dramatic downturn in Alexa's health that followed the delivery of her second baby, Sloan. And what this has meant for the family. COVID-19 is probably, uh, I'm, I'm an extrovert, I am a doer, I like to go places, and COVID-19, on top of being pregnant, was like being in jail for me. We were very diligent from the very get-go. Rob, Rob was very well read on COVID, probably over-read on COVID, and uh, I think we were wearing masks before masks were even a thing. And I thought Rob was crazy, and <laughs> but I abided. Uh, virtual visits, and then we also, um, Rob wasn't able to attend a lot of my medical appointments, so that was hard for me because A, I'm now having to to relay information as a pregnant lady is a challenge in itself because you have no brain. <laughs> so trying to remember what I've been told and just not having your support person with you, um, it, was, it was tough. And I think not knowing the status of my kidney disease or like what news am I gonna hear today or, you know, it was very stressful for me and for Rob too, you know, sitting in the car in the parking lot wondering what did she hear today? You know, is she gonna be in tears when she comes out again? Yeah, you know, lots of stages through this adventure that, you know, I felt pretty helpless. You know, I'd give anything for this to have happened to me and not to Alexis, you know, I would have much preferred and I still much prefer to have taken this on. Um, um, and so it, it has, you know, COVID's added just an extra layer on top of that. Um, but there's also been significant opportunities in that as well. Um, you know, there's been lots of times where um, the doctors have, you know, called us on conference calls and do Zoom meetings with, so that I can be included. Um, I think the most remarkable, um, thing that I noticed during the process, especially as we were getting further along in the second pregnancy was that um, all of Allie's six or eight doctors were meeting um, every couple of weeks on a morning Zoom meeting, just to talk about her health and, and the health of the baby. And when I look back at pre-COVID, 
I don't necessarily believe that they would have been able to coordinate their schedules. So they would have been all in the same place that way. So I think there's, you know, there's been some creative innovation that's happened um, through uh, through the worst of COVID that hopefully continues on because um, it gave us this tremendous confidence to know that um, that all these health professionals were convening on a regular basis just to discuss what they were seeing every every week on Ali's um, results. Second pregnancy, um, I was very closely monitored. Um, I think I did labs every week or every other week through the whole pre pregnancy. And then uh, we, closer to the end, like in the third trimester, the doctors all day were hoping that we would make it to 28 weeks. Um, that was our goal. And I always thought that I would make it to 36. I was very, very <laughs> determined. Um, <laughs> I was like, I will beat 30. I will beat the 28 weeks. But um, so we we were sort of close to 28 weeks. We made 28 weeks, and everyone was sort of took a took a deep breath, um, and said, "Okay, like baby will be just totally fine. She'll be small, but she'll be totally fine." Um, and then every week from that point was just a win for us. Um, so we got to 32 and a half weeks, 32 and four. And I think actually having all the care and attention that we did, we actually had a, a, a beautiful birth. Because of all the expertise and, and support from Alexis's doctors, um, their objective was to bring it in as a controlled and safe manner as possible and they absolutely hit the mark. They, they were trying to find that runway of, of making sure that Allie's health wasn't declining at a certain rate versus the baby obviously being far enough along to, to survive and thrive. And they were able to, to find that sweet spot. Um, and so it was extremely controlled induction. Um, it actually went much more smoothly than the first <laughs> delivery, if you can believe it. Um, and Thankfully. <laughs> literally hit the wall. Um, my body just completely quit on me. And um, I had done labs around Christmas time and within hours of those labs, got the phone call from our nephrologist that it was time to come to St. Paul's myself um, because my kidneys were failing me. And um, it's probably the last thing anyone wants to hear on a good day, let alone on Christmas. Um, so we didn't even, we were at uh, Women's Hospital, we didn't even have a chance to go home. Um, we just went straight to St. Paul's. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it was probably it was a little surreal. Um, um, you know, Ali was under the care of um, the kidney care unit um, at St. Paul's. Um, Sloan was battling her way and growing in the NICU at uh, Women's. And Hayden was at home with Ali's parents. And I was kind of in between trying to do what I could to support all of them, but all of them not as much as I would have liked. We, we were living you know, in a blur, a one hour by one hour blur, um, trying to keep our head above water. And, you know, we were living, you know, hour to hour by hearing how Ali's health was, um, every time a new blood pressure reading came in. Um, same with Sloan. Sloan was doing great, but in her own, was having some blood pressure issues, if you could believe it. Um, completely unrelated, but also elevated blood pressure. So, you she know. She also had a kidney kidney uh, ultrasound and they were worried about her kidneys at one point and Rob and I are like, this cannot be happening. I thankfully had a private room at St. Paul's and just sitting there to being like, this is so wrong. Like everything about this, this is like Christmas holidays. I just had a baby. 
I have a two-year-old at home and I'm sitting here in the hospital room sick away from everybody. I can't even walk the halls because COVID risk is too high. Yeah, it was not, um, not, a, not a dream vacation, that's for sure. First and foremost, I think we've really learned that um, that we're loved. Um, <laughs> definitely felt a lot of love from, and I think I think I hope most people are loved. But I think these things really make you feel loved and have people show you that they love you. Um, and it's not often in life that you're given such a real situation that is like life and death, and also um, a, a disease and an issue that does have a solution. So um, it's, it's, it's hard to manage the thoughts of what the future is for me um, and when. Um, but I think uh, going through this journey, Rob and I know that um, we're here for each other. You know, it certainly has made us stronger. We've been at our breaking point countless times um, over the past year specifically. Um, sometimes we feel completely alone, um, you know, especially because of COVID and the, the, last, uh, the lack of human connection and, and, and personal connection. But other times in the most recent weeks when we made that really difficult decision to kind of go semi-public and share our story, We've never felt so supported. Friends and family um, that we haven't seen um, because we're all busy or because of other circumstances have, have, have just, you know, come out and, and, and showed us so much love, um, given us hope that there is a pathway um, for Allie and for our family to move forward together. Um, and, and it's really that positive energy, the positive vibes that is keeping us going. In general, people don't want to share bad news. They don't want to share that they're sick. They don't want to look weak. Um, but we bit the bullet and we exposed ourselves and what we were going through. And I think there's a level of relief that's associated with it. Um, I feel, I certainly feel freed of what I'm going through because I've shared.